So the song Rapture is doing great here at iRock Radio, and, and I know it's getting a ton of radio play, but that's different than what you've had in your career prior. Mm-hmm. So most of your career, not a lot of radio play, if any. Zero, yeah. Zero radio We've always play. just been us underground doing our thing, you know? So tell me, you know, with Vans Warp Tour going away this year, tell me what that has meant to you as a band over the years and maybe how that helped help the band be I known mean, we and started, exposed. We started in 04 with zero dollars and no record sales and we sold 50,000 records of our first record on Warped Tour that summer through wow. our merch guy's fingers. Wow. And that record went on to become gold and, and the one after and um, it essentially set us up for something that we didn't think was possible. You know? To, and Warped Tour was very different. It than, was way different it's back very, then. It was yeah. very different then than it is now and that's no slight to Kevin. Like, I, I think he's a visionary but um, back then it was like you might play after a ska band <coughs> or Pennywise. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then there was like a rapper over here. Like it was like, it was such a large pool of art. Um, and it's changed a lot now. And that's no fault of Kevin's. That's just the industry. The, yeah, the music's changed. Yeah, the music the bands industry's that are playing changed so much. changed. And Even the venues have changed. I remember back in the day, they'd be like in a fairground somewhere, like yeah. a makeshift venue almost. And yeah. Put up a stage or several stages and have at it, you know, and offspring and seven dust back in the day playing along with yeah, whomever, yeah i think know? a lot you know they became like warp tour became the thing for like younger bands to maybe play in front of more people than they ever have and mm-hmm. kind of be rock stars or whatever and it kind of like got it watered down i feel like mm-hmm. and like he said i don't think it's on kevin i just think that scene kind of like it used warp tour used to be so yeah like i remember like the deftones were on it and like like no effects and like when i was in high school and Mm -hmm. like eminem yeah and like we did it you know a handful of times and then after we stopped doing it i noticed that it was just a lot of the same and it just became like its own genre Mm -hmm. almost like warp tour bands (laughs) and i think that kind of swallowed the whole thing up i mean not almost i mean there are bands that only do well on warp tour yeah Yeah. and i think that just kind of ate it alive you know when you got uh, yeah, like it was a lot different. We were, you worked really hard and, you know, no one had two buses and a bodyguard, that's for sure. <laughs> and then you show up now with these bands that are, you know, small with bodyguards falling around. And, and you got guys putting on makeup in the parking lot. Yeah. I mean, which is fine, <laughs> but like. It's we, different. Where else are you going to do it? Yeah, right. But when we started doing Warp Tour, it was like you wore swimming trunks and like. We sur- pushed our own gear through the dirt, yeah. the mud, the I'm rain. Sure. Like. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we passed out flyers every day in the line, you know, and then we took a nap and then we eat and then we play and, mm-hmm. you know, we worked our asses off. We played every off day, you know. Do you miss that? No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I, I think Fuck it's, no. I, I think it's, you feel like you earned it for sure. Sure. But would we, at now, I don't want to do that again. No, thank We're you. We're 35 years old, dude. <laughs> Those days are gone. Yeah, I, guess I got stomach problems <laughs> No, we now, you know, now I think that we're doing actually. Um, we're kind of doing the same thing. I feel like we're playing yeah, all these yeah. Wimmer festivals, which we've never been invited to play. We don't mm-hmm. have to push our gear, but no one knows who we are. We may have had all these record sales and this success in a different world, but at the Wimmer festivals, the Radio Rock festivals, no one right. knows who we are. Right. We're like working there now. Like we're doing, you know, we're it's working. A little, ha- it's as hard a little as we different, did. though, yeah. in the sense that like 10,000 people will show up to see us play. Because they know the name, right? They maybe have never. They don't know any of our songs except for Rapture because it's un- in rotation. Right. And I think that's the kind of work that is that we're doing now, which is super it's cool that yeah, this far into our career, we're still like we're working harder. We're working just as hard now as we did when we were eighteen, nineteen years old. Like we have off days, like we were telling you earlier, and like like we're here now. We you know we wake up in the morning and we we go to work at these radio stations and. Play acoustic, sick like you, like I was telling you. You know, I'm sure. sick as a dog, and mm-hmm. it's, it sounds like I'm screaming. In there, but you know, not a like, good time to be playing acoustic. Yeah, not a great time to be playing acoustic. But we're we're doing it because you know we we believe in what we're doing and uh, the support that we're getting, and that we've never had the acceptance from this side of the world, and we want to you know show people who we are and and get in there and work. We don't want it to be easy. You know, we want to to uh, get out there and and you know put our work in and Mm -hmm. and you know it too i mean this obviously you know i see cold records and stuff on your wall with your name on them like this industry is only about relationships big time for sure and you can be an 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 average artist and have great success based on your your rapport 
with someone who holds a key to some some place or someone who or be just friends with someone and i still i still that's something that will never change with the industry and that's the one tenant in the industry that i love the most mm-hmm. in, in music business is that you can make relationships with people you know what i mean like and, and that's that's such a beautiful thing to me and that's why speaking of warp tour and all that stuff we, that's why we never ever were dicks and never ever were like you know, not working hard. We, you know, we we definitely got it handed to us too. Like when we started Warp Tour, we got bullied a lot. Oh, like, really? It's it like was kind of like process. It was kind of like high school. We were mm-hmm. like the only heavy band, you know. And like mm-hmm. there was these older dudes that, you know, and they gave us a hard time, but they would they respected us though. Like they were just kind of like bringing us up, you mm-hmm. know. They would like check us and help us grow up a little bit. And they, it, it, it's not because they didn't respect our music. Uh, they just. We were the young kids, right? You know, there's nobody to keep anyone in check anymore. In terms of the younger bands, you know, I see you guys walking into places with sunglasses and not talking to anyone. I'm like, you're not going to get anyone <laughs> like that. It, do you, and we, 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 we've had this mentality is under oath. Like right now, we're on tour. The opening band's playing an hour after doors. It's something we've always done um, because we've been that opening band. Then the chance to have an audience. You get a, you get a chance to go on a tour, and you know, you're you're taking a loss. You're trying to build your name, and you're playing at doors. And right. there's a bunch of people walking in, buying merch, and not giving a shit, and buying beer and whatever. And it sucks to be out there for two months and like, oh man, like we we barely played to anybody, you know. Uh, and we've been the opening band that got like a case of water and a bag of chips, and the and the the headliner had like this this smorgasbord of like <laughs> like straight up like it was like shrimp cocktail and you know stuffed turkey and like <laughs> and we're starving. That's you know, actually the, a tour that the, will leave the band. Unnameless, the, the, but I remember that fucking turkey. And and they would they Ugh. would leave all this food out, and they would go. They, they had two buses, and and we were literally getting a, a bag of chips and and water, and barely making any money. Wow. But we were bringing a lot to the tour, like we were buzzing and, sure. and blowing up. But we weren't getting paid a lot, and we were starving. I remember we would wait, and when we saw those guys go go to bed, we go to their green room after they checked out and just eat their scraps because we were starving. Wow. And we vultures. Made, so it's going back to what he was saying about not being dicks is like we've made a we've made a conscious effort to make sure bands that we bring get treated well. Like everyone deserves to eat, man. Like that's not you can't treat people like yeah, that. Yeah, like I don't yeah. care how big your fucking your guarantee band is. might be smaller because you're not worth any tickets. But we're gonna make sure you fucking eat. That's for sure because mm-hmm. we've been that band and we've been treated terribly and we've been treated good too. I'm not saying it's all bad, but we remember. Those things, and that's important. It's always us. the mid-level bands that behave that way too. Hmm. If you go, you can go on tour with like the biggest band, and they'll just—they're they're just so great, so dude. sweet. Slipknot was the nicest dudes ever to us. Oh yeah, Take Corey would ride over on a golf cart with a case of beer. Hey guys, you want to hang out? Like big bands are usually sweet. It's the mid-level bands that think they're gods that are the buttholes, hmm. typically. Interesting. So. You're doing uh, the, the headlining run now in between these festivals. Bee market rock headliner. On the range, all yeah. that. What's the plan beyond that? We go to Europe after this. We have some flyouts. We've got, I mean, we're touring. We've got some stuff that's not announced yet. In, uh, touring for the next two years. We go to Europe in a week, a week after this tour, and then we're doing all the rock festivals. And we're doing Reading and Leeds in, in England, which is a big deal for us. Um, and then so there's some stuff that's not announced yet. So. All right. You can feel free to. Now we have cameras. You can announce it now if you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I don't have a text from anyone saying you can. So. <laughs> well, thank you for coming up to the world headquarters of rock and doing the acoustic performance and the interview. And yeah, thank you. We wish you yeah. nothing but best uh, success with the new album, Erase Me. So get that. Rapture doing well. And we can't wait thank to you. hear what's next from you guys. Thanks, guys. So awesome. thank you very much. Under Oath at iRock Radio, the world headquarters of rock. Thank you.